Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead preview from Privateer FX. I was about to start the recording 30 minutes ago, and uh, right at the top of the hour, the Fed followed the RBNZ and uh, and cut rates to the zero to the uh, zero to uh, 0.25 lower bound. Um, exactly what RBN. Z did, um, and everything just turned around massively. You can see here this wall, weekend Wall Street, which I like to look at on Sundays to get an idea of where stocks are going to open. Um, it was down about 4% four, 4 I think just before, and now you can see it's down under, um, it's down under uh, just, just a little less than one percent. So, you know, I think that uh, this should help risk sentiment. Uh, the, the big culprit, though, the big mover on this announcement. Um, so the Fed cuts the main rate to near zero, and they also boosted asset um, assets by seven hundred billion. Um, Banks can borrow from the discount window. I mean, they, they threw everything at this. So I, this wasn't that big of a surprise. And clearly someone knew they were going to announce something before the market opened because you saw the price action on Friday, the last half hour, 45 minutes, where we just went completely parabolic. Um, so I guess I can't say I'm all that, all that surprised. It uh, probably not great for our bearish... Um, for our bearish bond positions or views, and we highlighted that in, on Twitter a little bit ago. Um, but anyhow, so the, the big moving, the big mover was a dollar. Uh, Kiwi is crazy. Let's see if I don't think Trading View. Let's see if they're up yet. Let's see if it's showing Kiwi yet. Uh, let me make sure this is the real time. <coughs> Dry cough, sorry. Yeah, this is real time. So you can see what happened. That's a weekly, so hold on. Let me, let me show, up and show the daily. So when the RBNZ announced uh, a couple hours back, Kiwi tanked, obviously, with the, the rate cut, got down to 59.90. And you can see now we are actually higher on the day. We're up about. Um, well, we're actually not higher. We were higher on the day. We went up to 61.50, and now we're just a touch. Uh, according to Bloomberg, we're down just a bit. Um, so the dollar came under serious selling pressure. You can see dollar yen is down about 1.1%. Um, you know, we closed here real strong on the right at 108. That again was on the S&P rally late in the day, and then we gapped open. Um, lower and it sold off on the when the Fed cut rates. So some really big moves. You know, we're still kind of in this twilight zone. The, the future is open in about 15 minutes. So I'm going to get this thing over with quickly. Um, gold should benefit from this. Uh, looks like they, I don't have it here, but we, we did test um, a FIBO, kind of the last FIBO and right around the 200 day moving average in gold on Friday. And that you can see it rallied a little bit with uh, the late day rally in stocks. Seems counterintuitive, but they are selling everything. So, um, and it, you know, a lot of this was this dollar shortage. I mean, the, the, the moves in the dollar last week were just crazy. Um, the DXY <coughs> had some, <coughs> excuse me. DXY last week, or the low of the DXY was 94.65. Hold on. Sorry about that. <coughs> Pardon the cough. I do have a, a little bit of a cold. It's not coronavirus. Um, I hope. Um, we bottomed at 94. 72. Why don't we pull up TXY here? 
Sorry, stuff is just flying around right now, so I'm a little bit distracted. I want to get this done before the open. Um, so you can see here the low, 94.65, and then we were up one, two, three, four um, straight days, closed at 98.70. So we've retraced a, let's just see where the fins come in here. Draw this real time. Oh, that's cute. Okay, so that's a three-quarter fib right there. Um, that's going to come, you know, the dollar index is, you're not seeing it here, but if you look at the euro, um, you know, the euro, uh, actually, let's do the retracement on the euro from the low that we saw, 107 handle, up to the high, 115-ish. So we retraced about 11050 was right. That's actually interesting. We got a couple lows there now. That looks like a huge level, 11050 in the euro. And you know, we're we're higher now, 11184. The spreads, by the way, are because it's the futures markets are not open, are still extremely wide. Um, euro's even euro's like 30 points wide, which is crazy. Um, dollar yen's 30 wide. Um, so Anyhow, this should put a, a bit of a floor in for some of these currencies. Um, you know, they're they're also uh, they also uh, what else do they do? They're at, the Fed acts with other central banks to enhance dollar swap lines. So that is basically a you know, putting pressure on, on the dollar here in early Asia. Um, but the other countries aren't going to want to see their currency strengthened. I mean, the last thing the Eurozone needs is a strong euro right now. So uh, I, we expect this to be short-lived. Um, I don't love the fact that they did it this weekend, that they did it today, that the, the Fed cut. I mean, their meeting was on Wednesday. Now Wednesday's a non-event. I mean, they really can't do anything else. Now they just wait for fiscal. So, you know, our our, our kind of bearish bias in, in the bond market looking for higher rates um, is on the back of the fiscal stimulus because when they do announce something, they're, they're going to throw everything at this, and they have to. Um, the weekend news flow has been, like, outright scary. Um and it's not going to get any better. It's going to get a lot worse here in the U.S. A lot worse. I mean, the numbers. If it, if we start, if we're following the paths of you know all the other countries, Italy and you know Spain's on lockdown. Everyone's closing their borders, and there's no flights. And you know you saw the queues at at, at Chicago O'Hare and Dallas um, over the weekend, five hours just to get through customs. Um, it looks like a complete shit show. So none of this is going to get any better soon. Um, sure, this is a, a Band-Aid. This helps instill some confidence in the market. Um, stocks are pretty massively oversold. Anyhow, short term. Um, let's take a look at S&Ps just to give you an example. I mean, this was, you know, the 9.5% move on Friday the 13th. So what we're looking for, because we think we're in a, we're now in a bear market and we need to be selling rallies as opposed to buying dips. We are looking at levels. The first third is 2780. Kind of like this area up here, right around 2800. So 2850 was that old low. We broke it. We had a couple highs here at 2880. So 2850 to call it 2900 is my guess um, where we'll probably go, and uh, I think that'd be there'd be good risk reward in uh, in selling rallies up there. You know, even even a stretch, we could we could get up to 29. Um, we could get up to 3000. I guess we could retrace two thirds of this, but I, I don't know. I I just feel like. There seemed to be a lot of, obviously, a lot of panic on the streets. Thursday was just, uh, you know, the market just got completely decimated. It's interesting. Um, I saw something, I think it was on Friday, where we had made 
very important lows on March 12th back in 09. I think it was in oh, uh, maybe in 16 and uh, maybe even 01 um, or 02, whenever that stock, whenever the stocks bottomed after the um, after the dot com bubble. Um, they were all they all happened around uh, March 12th, which is kind of eerie and strange, but. We're definitely in selling risk rally mode because we know the news flow is not going to get any better. Uh, it seems like the general public, they, you know, the U.S. has finally panicked enough to shut down the schools. Uh, there are just some headlines that New York City is shutting down all their schools, um, and there's a good chance that they will not reopen this school year. Um, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if that's the case in uh, in all of the. Uh, oh, there's a fifth death in New York City too, by the way. Um, I wouldn't be at all surprised if they if the U.S. schools don't open uh, this academic year. So e-learning, um, you know, for my kids and in the you know both in the college level and high school junior high, uh, it'll all be e-learning, um, should help their grade points, I would think. They know how to use Google, if you get my drift. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, so that's S&P's 10-year yields shot up to 102, I think, on Friday. These, these yields should come back down a bit with all of this uh, stimulus, uh, monetary stimulus that was just announced. And the dollar, like I said, is going to be remain under pressure here. We'll see how long that lasts. Gold, I think, could be a good, a big beneficiary of this. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. I want to get ready for this open in a few minutes. Uh, good luck trading. You'll hear from us on the European Open, and I'll be tweeting you guys uh, this evening. All the best. Cheers.